I got to get your opinion on this guy. How many of you know Shell Silverstein or Silverstein? I think it is. Ah, good old. Sh I wish I could take apart. I got to take it apart. I'm going to do it. I'm going to, hopefully, I'm going to do it here because his covers, his pictures just crack me up. This guy has some of the craziest back cover. <laughs> Welcome, Mike, the Golden State Picker. Yeah, if you're new to my channel, I'm out of California, San Jose, or Silicon Valley, as we call it. But I also have a home on the East Coast in North Carolina, the Jacksonville, North Carolina area along the coast. And I just got back from uh, 16 days out there. And now I have to ship all this stuff that I sold on eBay. And I don't have to ship the stuff I sold on Amazon. I do sell Amazon FBA, and when you're on vacation with Amazon, it's easy. You just do anything. You just let them sell. So, uh, interesting trip this time, and uh, we'll talk about it in a second. It was just pretty crazy. So, uh, came back. Weather's nice. I'm happy that the weather's not 100 degrees because I'm going to spend all day in this garage shipping out 78 items. So, I sold 78. My record is 81, but that was over about a three-week uh, span. This was 16 days, so there was a very similar. So 78 items that I'm going to uh, have to ship up. Ship up. Sh I, I need to ship up, but sh maybe ship out. Uh, anyhow, I have, uh, you can tell I'm still a little bit on East Coast time. That's the thing, you know. Uh, go I think it's much harder going that way. Uh, I don't know. It takes me four or five days to adjust there, but coming back here, I can kind of handle that. I'd rather get up early and get going, that kind of thing. So, all right, now. Uh, I had a lot of plans for this trip. Uh, I had my upstairs room in that North Carolina home that I finished. And uh, we finished putting up some doors for attic space, some stuff like that. We uh, painted some trim, all that. But then uh, about five days in, I ended up having an issue health-wise. Nothing to do with my newly uh, diagnosed uh, diabetes issue. But... Um, I got a salitis in my nasal passage and I had it for, oh, I was playing golf with Adam one day and it wasn't, I wasn't feeling a hundred percent. Came home that night and I was burning up. And uh, so I thought, okay, what's going on? The next morning the fever broke, but I, uh, there was something like inside my nose. It wasn't feeling right. So long story short, being a male, it took me a couple days to figure out that I should go see a doctor. But Adam said, hey, you want to go uh, garage sailing? This was on Saturday mornings. So on Saturday morning, we go, hey, let's go. And about two, three hours in, uh, we're in the main part of the city of Jacksonville. That's where the hospital is. And I said, hey, Adam, why don't you just drop me off at the emergency room? You know, this is not getting any better. And uh, just take home. I had rented a pickup truck, so he had it. So I said, just take the truck home. Um, I'll call you when, I'm, when I got something going on here. You guys can come pick me up. It's about 20, 25-minute ride to the hospital. So I went in, and anyhow, long story short, she immediately looks at me and says, oh, you have cellulitis. It's an infection. So they immediately gave me uh, some heavy penance, some heavy meds. I took three, three medicines, and for the next two or three days, it was really tough. Man, my nose was, like, killing me. And I still have a little bit in my lip now because it, it went down underneath my gum line, and I'm dealing with that, but otherwise it finally broke. Now I'm going to tell you. I, it's actually a blessing in one way because I, I needed to see what the healthcare system was like out there. If I'm going to eventually move there, we've got to find out what's going on. And I got into the emergency room about, uh, I think it was 1030. And there was nobody in there. I thought, oh, I'm going to get in right away. Well, you don't know what's going on in the back. I know, uh, long story short, two hours. I waited two hours and I got in. And, I, and at that point, I, I was just kind of just zoning out. And uh, I thought, okay, what's next? How am I going to pay for this? Right? I'm thinking I'm going to have to give them a credit card and then bill my insurance company. My insurance company is Kaiser. So long story short there, fill out the form. They say, don't give us anything yet. She'll talk to you inside. I get inside, another nurse comes in or a person who works in the billing department takes all my information, says, okay, thanks, Mr. Wilson. Doctor will be in. Doctor comes in, does all the stuff. They, they give me the meds, all that kind of stuff. And then she says, uh, where do you want your prescription? I said, well, where can we go with it? She goes, well, we have a Walgreens right down the street. I can send it over there. We have a good relationship. I go, okay, I'm going to have to pay for those too. I don't know. 
So anyhow, what happens? The doctor says, you're free to go. And I go, where's my bill? She goes, oh, you don't have to worry about that. It's all taken care of through Kaiser. So I, you know, I'm like, whoa, okay, this is really cool. This is nothing. So then I go over to Walgreens and I'm picking up my prescriptions and I'm, I'm trying to present this Kaiser travel card to them. Can this help me in any way, shape or form? The guy's looking at me, my wife's standing next to me now and she's all, what's going on? I, I just want to know if we pay for this with this card or not. And he goes, no, he goes, Kaiser says it's a $5 copay. Instantly from there to Walgreens, it was all taken care of. It was $15 I was out in my pocket for that hospital visit and everything. That's it, 15. So I will give him big kudos. Uh, the system worked, okay? It was, it was painless and I'm on the road to being mended. So uh, that was freaky because they say if, if you can't, if you've got like a staff or some kind of inspection, infection, inspection, my, I'm really off the beat. They could go up and get into your brain or anything, you know, then you got trouble, especially when you're older, all that kind of stuff. So I am doing better. And I'm ready to go. I was worried that I would get here and have to have other problems and go back to the doctor. But so far, everything is okay. All right. We got about 21 items on this uh, little run here. And we're going to show you those. And uh, we'll talk uh, as we go along also about certain things. We've got a lot of media. So that's cool because I, I do a lot of media, you know, books, that kind of stuff. But stick around. got some interesting stuff. Let's just kick it off right off with a really nice book. And the book is, it feels cold, weird. Play It As It Lies, a novel by Joan Didion. Now, I saw something about them and their family. And uh, I don't know if it was 60 Minutes or something, it, but it was interesting. And this book is in really, really good shape. It's not a library book. So it looks like it could be a library book. It has a name on it, but no, it's in perfect condition. Now, First editions can go for some money. This was in my bin. And like I said, when you just look at it, you go, oh, that kind of looks cool. Let's look it up. That's one way to do it. And you got to know authors and so forth. First edition, $140 plus $11 shipping. Now, uh, people are asking, well, how would what, you do on this trip? How much How much did you sell? Let's, let's get that out of the way. <laughs> All right, put that there for right now. Um... Uh, basically eBay, I sold $4,605 worth of stuff. Amazon, $7,584. So about $12,000 worth of uh, stuff sold. Now the $4,605, you got to take out fees, all that kind of stuff. That's how it works. Now I wanted to compare year over year. So I did a quick comparison. Uh, eBay, I was up the same period in 2023 versus 2024. 24 was up 37%. I'm like, wow, I must have had a really slow two-week period in August. I wasn't positive if I was back there either. Amazon, I did. Uh, I was down about $2,000. So Amazon has been a little funky right now. And Amazon, if you don't feed it at the right time and you're gone, that's the one bad thing about Amazon is you, you try to feed them every single day. And I didn't feed them for about 17, 18 days, okay? So it finally will catch up to you towards the end a little bit more. So still, uh, $12,000 worth of uh, items sold in uh, basically 16 days or two weeks. Take it all day long. Okay. Uh, now, I got to get your opinion on this guy. How many of you know Shell Silverstein or Silverstein? I think it is. Ah, good old, sh I wish I could take apart, I gotta take it apart, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna, hopefully I'm gonna do it here, because his covers, his pictures just crack me up, this guy has some of the craziest back cover photos, look at this one, there's old Shell, look at him, he's got his foot up almost in the camera, evil looking, guitar, and he's writing kids books, and I'm like, oh my goodness, that's wild. So you start to see, uh, here's another one. Looks like he's at the top of Mount Everest. And that's the photo that they put on the back of that one. Falling up. Now, there you go. More traditional type photo of Shell right there. And, I don't know, that's the back of the lion on that one. So no picture on that one. Uh, another one. It looks like he's, you know, in on safari. I don't, that's kind of wild. Is there any, anything else? Oh, and look at this one. 
I kind of, if you quick glance, he looks like Ansel Adams. That's the first thing you think, but there you go. There's another one of him too, that he's, he's, uh, I don't have it here where he's sitting and he's like mansplaining. If you know what mansplaining is, you know what I'm talking about. But this is a Shell uh, Silverstein or Stein uh, book set for $40 plus $11 on the shipping side. Good old Shell, huh? You find his books everywhere. It, they Every bookstore carries them. All right. Hey, let's take a look. I had this forever. I mean forever. Insecta, second edition. Bizarre. I don't know. It's just about insects. It's pretty cool looking. Little plastic spiders and all that kind of stuff. And obviously came out of my bin of books years ago. I Probably two years ago. And it sold for $30 plus $12 on the shipping side. I like that. Nice old stock as they say bye all right i'm going to show you two that i have that are already pre-boxed i'm going to give you kind of a general this is a race track it is a uh, um i don't know if it's ravel but it's a slot car track setup no cars okay but a super clean box and uh we got this for about 19 minus the uh, 20%, so about $16 at Savers. And I'll put it up here so you can see it. There it should go right now. $100 plus $30 shipping. Now I'm lucky here. I think this is only going to um, California. So I'm gonna make a few dollars on the shipping, which will help. Um, this is what I do when I have an oddball shape. This is a very big piece. I will, if I, if I find a box behind Joanna's Fabrics, that's where I get most of my bigger boxes then I will pre-box and get them ready to go. So keep that in mind. I got a noise over here. I'm going to kill it real quick. There we go. Sorry. Yeah, I don't like that because it would probably buzz in the video. Yeah. Now, um, also, I did just talk about my wife has uh, been away. Well, my wife's been away. Mike, she stayed back there. Okay, my young, my middle grandchild is having her tonsils and adenoids taken out. So she is going to be staying back for 10 more days to help with that and uh, uh, all that kind of stuff. So I flew home by myself for the first time ever. And it was a little odd, but uh, I made it back. I'm going to use the time to finally get in here and clean this place up in the outside. Got yard work I need to do, all that kind of stuff. Hopefully give her a nice clean house when she gets back from that. Ah, let's keep going. These are uh, Aura Soma, some kind of cards, some kind of, you know, I had found three of these. I found four. Two were sealed new, two were new opened. This finally sold. This is the last one. And the Aura sold for $60 plus $9 on the shipping side for that. The good thing also about this, um, at least this run, is um, uh, everything seems to be pretty easy, manageable to to, uh, to ship. So I'm hoping we'll see how it works out. This came out of uh, my bin also. This is a Sony, uh, and it's a little disc player. Very interesting. And... Um, the one way you can try it, it has batteries. There are batteries that you can put in this right here. That helps you. But if you don't have the batteries, you need that adapter. Remember the adapter? I have it buried in my toolbox right now. And it's a multi-voltage, right? And you plug it in, and then you dial in the volts. It'll tell you, usually on the back of here, what you need. And you plug that and dial in that voltage. Find the right tip. It has many tips. And then you can test it. And that's what I used. I used the video feature to test it. We got $30 plus $11 shipping. These get dumped in with a bin, sometimes mixed in with books that people are donating. So I just don't find uh, uh, books. I find a lot of very different things. All right, here we go. Ah, book lot. Patricia Moyes. And she's, an, uh, I think, a uh, crime detective writer. Nice little lot here that I kept. And... Uh, Moyes sold for $30 plus $11 on the shipping side. Nice little set. I like finding sets. You're going to see a few more here in a minute, probably. 
As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you a comic book set. This stuck around for a long time, too. Now, I've got another couple of bins of these, and I'm trying to figure out how I want to approach this, because this is old. This is 20 various comics. You'll see them up here. And I sold them for 24 plus 12. These are the, uh, I think, direct-to-market sales, that kind of thing. They're not. They're a little bit of everything. Uh, uh, and uh, Image Comics, I think, is one of them. That kind of setup. And I'm trying to figure out just to lot these and how to lot them. And I already pre-boxed it. And it's been around for a while. But it finally did sell for the 24 plus 12. So I, I like that. I'm going to go back now. Now that I'm, I don't have a whole lot of stuff basically to list in the next day or two, I'm hoping to go back through some of my lots and let's get some stuff back into the system on eBay. That's going to be very key. Okay. Uh, I got this at a garage sale last summer, and this is Stangle, okay? And they are, these are like little soup bowls or something. Four of them. I sold a bunch of the Stangle. I, I think I only have one plate left or something. And uh, I paid $15 for the entire set, $15. I remember that distinctly. It's in a box. You said $15, you can have it. And the Stangle sold for $25. And here's where I think I screwed up because, hey, I'm not always perfect. Uh, I put $25 for shipping for this. That's probably why it took so long. Sometimes you got to, I don't know if I was just drawing a blank or what, but uh, I got, I'm pretty sure the shipping was way off on that. And she offered me, I think something, but, and I said, you know what? More than fair. So sometimes you got to, you got to do what you got to do. Move. That's the other thing we'll talk about in the next video about uh, what I think about, how I think about certain things while on vacation, all that kind of stuff. We'll talk about that in the second video that I do. Bin of Books, The Dick Van Dyke Show. One issue. I believe there's one disc missing. It's always that, right? I've had two of these. I had a, I had a Ironside missing one. And then, oh, Perry Mason. I had a Perry Mason missing one. And then Dick Van Dyke. I think an Ironside, Raymond Burr. He was in Ironside, which was taking place in San Francisco. And then Perry Mason. So anyhow, Dick Van Dyke. I still got 20 plus $6 shipping. So... Nice little setup there. Interesting book. This also came out of my bin of books. Herdom. Um, okay. Uh, volume 8, 1990 to 2000. I don't have any ideas. Uh, it's definitely off the charts a little bit. So anyhow, <laughs> Herdom. It's so far. 21 plus 7 on that shipping side. Nice little deal. Yeah, they all add up, right? That's the one great thing is uh, it, to get consistent, you need consistent listings and then just keep selling, keep selling. And you'll be amazed that it adds up over time. And you can see the comparison from last year to this year, same time frame. Even though I'm on vacation, I did better. Okay, so keep that in mind. Just keep forging ahead. All right, this is electromagnetic compatibility, and I've talked about these type of books. There are never really, when I don't find any um, real comps or anything like that for books like these, some of these, I take them anyhow, and I try to see if I can get them to sell uh, anyhow quickly. Because here's the thing, if you've got four or five books up there, and they're all 100, well, they're all priced wrong, and they haven't sold. There's no comp. Then they're just pricing it wrong. So now you need to find out, or what I like to say is, we need to print one. That means to print it means to show that it can sell at X dollars. Now I have one here. This one sold for 43 plus 10, and that's a print. So now the people at 100 say, hey, I got to probably be down at 43 if I'm going to have a shot or somewhere around there. So we got 43 plus the $10 on the shipping on that book. I can't tell you how many I've sold that way. So this one here is Integrative Assessment, a Guide for Counselors. I don't know if it has any writing. Yeah, fair condition. And this one sold for some decent money. Integrated sold also for 43 plus free shipping. So I think this one had a, a few more comps, okay? But that's why I did free because that's where everybody was kind of sitting. So free on that one. We're moving along. I'm trying to figure out where we want to go. All right, let's uh, let's switch it. Uh, no, let's not switch it up. Keep going. I'll tell you about this book. Look for this one. Rapid Interpretation of EKGs. Very cool book. 
Now, this one is not in color. I'm going to explain, okay? You can see it. The sixth edition sells much better. This is the fourth edition. If you had the sixth, it was in color. It's really kind of nice. Every time I get the sixth, it sells quickly. The fourth took forever, but I still managed to sell this. 14 plus free shipping. It is blocked for me on Amazon. It's been blocked for years, uh, and it has to probably do with EKGs. They don't want, I don't know, you know, something interesting, but... Uh, you know, and if, if, this is the kind of stuff, if you want, you could uh, really study to be a doctor just by getting books like this. I sometimes wonder if that's what people do, if they are taking these just to understand EKGs. Or is it a doctor? I don't know. You just, you don't know. Interesting. All right. Now, this is Edward Tuft. I find his books a lot. You can sell these individually on on Amazon. So if I find one, it's like so one can be $3 net profit, not a whole lot. Uh, but there's four. This is only three. Okay. Still, I put it up. I got 20 plus $10. So 20 plus 10. Uh, I could have, you know, people say, ah, I don't know. It's $20. It's still a solid $20 find. I'll take that all day long. Old software, been a books. Microsoft Office Access. Okay, and you think, uh, well, game old gaming software definitely is a winner. Uh, some of this stuff, Microsoft DOS, sealed new, all of that kind of stuff. Yes, it can sell for some good money. And um, the, uh, what do we get for the software? Mm, I think uh, we got 25 plus free shipping. Good thing is it goes media mail. So this one you're not going to make a lot of money on, but... It still made me money, and I'm very happy about that. Can't complain. We just can't, right? All right, uh, one more lot, an older lot. I don't know if I'll, I don't think I'll gather these unless unless they really show up in a, in a big way. This is beading. There's a lot of books about beading uh, and stuff like that. So jewelry, that kind of thing. And the beading sold for 28 plus 17 on the shipping side for that little lot. Now, oh, sorry, bang, it was a little heavy. Let's get into the golf club portion of our video. Boom, there we go. I sold a lot of golf clubs, so wow, that was pretty cool. Now, that's the other thing, I gotta collect boxes for these, and that's what I do, I stockpile these, and I should be fine. It's finding all of these that is the key, and I, I found the first three. This is a ping. And you see the S for sand wedge. And this is a ping zing. Notice the little color dot, green. Very important in the item specifics, the title, all of that. You need to put green dot. Uh, ping does something unique. They have white, red, blue, black. And it's the fitting angle or the lion angle lofts. Oh, it's, it's a little complicated, but you must, when you get pings, the older ones, Put that color dot code. This is sand wedge in very good condition. And uh, I got a bunch of these. Uh, there was not a complete set, but I took the ones that I knew would sell well. And the ping, the ping sand wedge sold for 25 plus 13 on the shipping side. Now, I always sold a, another one. Lefty. I'll tell you, it's out there for everybody. This one is a four iron. It is a Slingshot 4D by Nike. They are no longer making golf clubs. Tiger used to play for Nike. It was a money deal. And, uh, and then Nike just couldn't make any money after that. So uh, he is still with Nike, I think, but does clothing, I believe, or his own line or something like that. Um, this is a left-handed, and this is a ladies. And how do we know if it's a ladies? First, I know because it's the grip is smaller. I'm holding it. You're not. <laughs> There is a W right there for women's flex. There will also be an L for ladies flex. There's an A for senior flex, men's. So there's all kinds of that. You've got to get that stuff in the description. And uh, this is a ladies four. And this one's actually going over seas. 22 plus $14 on the shipping side. And the last one right here, Ben Hogan pitching wedge um hogan well this is not this is a this is a gap wedge now hogan was famous for 
if you don't know who Ben Hogan is, was I've talked about him. He got in an auto accident, came back. Uh, they called him the Hawk. The Irishman called him the the uh, We the We Man or something small. But he the only time he won the British Open, I think, it was when he went over there one time and won it. So anyway, I was watching uh, YouTube because uh, uh, back east, sometimes I'm on my computer and I go through YouTube and up popped the match between, um, it was Ben Hogan and I can't remember who else. Oh, Sam Snead, great Sam Snead. And there's Ben Hogan and uh, they were talking about his wedges and he had a wedge and it says an E, equalizer. So when you see this Ben Hogan brand, okay, and you see E, that means it's a basically a pitching wedge, equalizer. And this one's a 52 degree Riviera. Didn't get a lot of money for the Hogan, but I knew it would sell 18 plus 14 on the shipping side. Now, um, Ben has his own flex and it, it's the flex you can find on the, on the labels here, Apex, and then it'll tell you stiff or regular on there. Uh, remember grips, got to say something about the condition. I would, and, I, and just because I'm playing, I would say this grip is still got life in it. Um, that's kind of what I would say. Hey, there's still life in the grip. But I always leave one more disclaimer inside my description on a golf club. And I will say something to this effect. As with all grips, you may want to change to meet your style or game, basically. How you play the game. Because grips are personal. I know that I play a certain style of grip. Now, I might change the color of it, but it's still the same size. It just feels good to me. So that's something you just leave as a little disclaimer. Say grip is fair, but as usual, you may want to change them. They're not getting cheap now. To change one golf grip, to give you an example, uh, this is probably, if I want to go get the grip that I want to use, is about $12, $11, $10, and $12. You might be able to get $10, but I don't think so anymore. Then you need the tape to wrap it, and then you need like lighter fluid or um, grip solvent. They're easy to change, okay? I do my own. But think about that. If you have 14 clubs and you have to change your grips at $10, let's say 10, that's 140. But let's say you have somebody else do it. They're going to be 140 plus their time. So you can see it can get expensive. It's not like it used to be where you used to have maybe 7, 8, 9, 10 grips. Now you've got hundreds of grips uh, when it comes to golf. Jumbo size, got to keep in that mind. Mid size, <coughs> got to keep all that in mind. All right, video number one is in the can. Super thanks for watching this one. I'll be back to show you some more stuff. We'll talk more reselling. We'll talk, I got stuff on my mind. Feeling a little better, still a little puffy, but I'm getting better. Uh, can't knock me down too long. So anyhow, many thanks for watching my video. Don't forget, we ask like subscribe, bell notification. That's it. Very simple for my channel. And again, we'll see you in my next video.